Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live chat. I'm Angela Walters and every week I get on here and talk about quilting and this week's live chat I'm gonna revisit a topic that I talked about a couple weeks ago, but had a Power outage kind of at an inconvenient time. So we're just gonna pretend that never happened and We're gonna start over from the beginning. I'm gonna talk about swirling feathers You might hear them called plate feathers basically feather machine quilting designs that kind of branch off to fill a lot bigger space to help get my point across, I have my trusty whiteboard here. I'll be drawing through some of the designs and I'll kind of talk through um, how this design goes together. But before we start, I just want to give like a little caveat. Um, it's one that I don't necessarily include in classes or um, videos because there is a little bit more to think about. It's not difficult per se. It's just hard to know where you need to go. So I'm going to kind of talk through it, but just know that if you try this design on your quilts, the most important thing is just think, where do I need to go next and how can I get there? So hopefully we can break it down and make it a little bit easier. First though, let's look at some pictures. Let's see what I'm talking about, what we're gonna be learning. And this is kind of what I would call a swirling feather. Basically again, instead of having that one long spine, we have the pieces that come off of it. So what is the point of this, you might be thinking? Well, it's gonna allow my feather to take up a lot more room. That's really nice. If I have a big area that I wanna fill in, um, a regular just straight feather or just one spine feather can only go so big before it gets a little difficult to quilt. So being able to branch off allows it to take up a bigger space and it has a more intricate kind of custom look. So basically this is kind of the difference with it. Now if we want to compare this to a typical feather, so these are both Tula Pink's butterfly quilts. I quilted this one gosh, almost seven, eight, nine, I don't know, several years ago. And you can see those feathers just have one spine. It just kind of goes in a row, even though it curls around. But to fill up the space, I had to quilt multiple of them. So again, the main difference is we're just branching off, kind of sprouting off of that main design. Now, as you try this, I want to encourage you to kind of have fun with the placement of your feather and where it's going to go. There's really no rhyme or reason to where they kind of branch out um, as far as how you use them on your quilt. But one really fun thing about it is it allows you to kind of break that feather up into sections. So instead of quilting the whole spine and coming back, I can actually work my way through that feather in, in chunks. And we'll see that here in a second when I start to draw. Um, again, when we start adding our feathers, just like we saw in previous feather tutorials that I've done, you can do the custom feather, which is this style where I'm kind of stacking the petals on top of each other. Or you can do more of a basic feather where we kind of have that half heart shape or any of the variations that you work with. So this technique works with any feather variation. Um, it just depends on the look that you're going for and how much time you want to invest into the quilting design that you're doing. In this particular example, I want to show you that my spine is pretty echo heavy. Again, that's one of the hardest things about this design is you'll see here in a second how I need to get back and forth to an area. And so I use echoing to do that. That means that my spine is gonna have more echo lines than yours would, or than, than a normal one would. However, there are ways that you can avoid that or omit that if you want. And we'll talk about that here in a second. And as you're making your sections and filling them in, one thing I just wanna preface before we even get to the drawing is depending on the machine you're working on, you can make these sections as long or as big as you want or as small as you want. It's the size of those petals that will determine the density of your feather. So if I'm working on a small throated sewing machine, I might make my sections a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller and more compact. Or if I'm on a long arm with a little bit more freedom of movement, I might make them a little bit longer like I did here. There's no wrong answer. So don't, don't feel like you have to get them in a perfect size. Again, it's the size of the petals that will determine the density. All right, I have my handy dandy drawing board. This design is gonna go together the same way, whether you're on a sewing machine or a long arm. So even though I'm not demonstrating the actual quilting, you'll be able to see how it goes together. Now I'm gonna start with a green marker and this will represent my marked lines. Okay, if you have listened to any of my live chats, you might be kind of like, what? I do actually mark out a general spine for my feather so I can make sure that it's how I want to look. All right, so starting over here, I'm gonna mark my first spine and it's gonna be kind of a curl. So think of like um, a big curl. And this is gonna be pretty large. I want enough room in here to add my petals and add my echo lines. Again, this can be as big as you want it to be. It could be not quite as round. It can stretch out a little bit more. But my next one, my next part of my spine is gonna come out like this. I almost want it to look as though th if this one were covered up, this is still gonna look like a spine. Or if this one were covered up, I want them to kind of come off each other like that. 
don't stress about it, but it's just gonna give me a little bit more of an elegant look. So if I were getting ready to work on my quilt, I might mark out these general lines. I'm just kind of determining where I want the curls of that spine to fall. And like any feather, I can go in any direction. I can make this wrap around if I want it to. I can make it go in a straight line. Again, it just really depends on what your uh, vibe is for the quilt. All right, now that I have my, my spine here, let's talk about a couple things that I like to do. Now, I'm only the expert of my opinion, so take this for what it is. When I'm filling in my feathers, I'm adding my petals around my spine, I like to do the outside of my curl first. That's because I wanna make sure I have plenty of room to wrap it around, and then I work up the inside. What that's gonna do is give me a, a couple of times where I'm gonna have to figure out how to get where I'm going. So let's see what this actually looks like. Now I'm gonna use my black marker. This will be my quilting. So I have my marked line and I'm gonna start quilting along my spine. Now the good thing about a marked line is it is a guide. It's just a suggestion. If you don't hit it perfectly, no worries. You're gonna erase it pretty soon and nobody's gonna know where you meant to go. So I'm going to quilt along my first spine. Now from here, I wanna start adding my petals along the outside of my curl first. Again, that's just me. But the way that it works, I'm gonna do the custom petal where they stack on top of each other. I need to get back down to here to add my petals, if that makes sense. So to get there, I'm just gonna use echoing. Now at this point, it's up to you. I could break thread and just get where I need to go. Again, thinking through the next steps. Um, but for the most part, I'm going on the outside and since they stack up from the bottom up, I'm gonna get to the bottom of here. All right, wherever these swirls come apart, or these um, spines come apart, the petals will eventually join, but I'm gonna not have very much room where those lines come together. So here, where they all come apart, my first move will always be this teardrop. And if you wanted to, you could even use your marking tool and mark those out. Basically, where the spines come apart, I'm gonna add my teardrop and then build off each side to my feather. Okay, so, so far, quilting my spine, getting back here, adding my teardrop, and now it's time to just pedal my way around my swirl. Depending, or my spine, depending on how much space I have, I'm gonna make these petals fairly large. This design needs some room to grow, so I'm not putting this in a really small area. I'm gonna make sure I have enough room for it, and I'm really gonna extend the petals out into that area to fill it in. Like, I'm gonna take up as much room as I can with this. Before I start drawing, I'm gonna pause. If you're watching live and you have any questions, be sure to put them in the type chat. Jessica's here writing them down for me so I can answer them at the end. All right, so now I'm ready to start adding my petals. Again, I'm doing the custom type petal where I quilt them in groups of two. One is gonna go out. Is everything okay? Another audio issue. They, just, they can't hear me. Uh-oh. Sorry. Okay, hold on. Little audio issue. Let's move this a little bit closer. Hopefully that helps. I'll lean closer in. Okay, thank you. I can tell when Jessica looks at me, there's something wrong, so. Okay, so I'm quilting these in groups of two and I'm gonna come out and then back, filling in that space. And I'm gonna work all the way around to the very point of my swirl. Basically, I want this curl to really kind of be pronounced and take up room. I know I got kind of cut off over here, but you get the gist. All right, now that I'm here, I wanna go ahead and do this side, the inner side of my swirl. So I'm here and I need to get to the bottom. How am I gonna get there? I'm gonna echo, that's right. I'm always gonna echo. Again, I like to build up my spine. Um, you, you might just break thread and come back over here, it's up to you. But now that I got to this side, now I'm gonna start filling in that area with my petals. And again, I'm just gonna make, wanna make sure I don't leave any gaps. I'm quilting it so they fill in and getting into the center. Now I know my lines are a little squiggly, my hands are shaky when I draw like this, but here's the basic idea, and that's the first section of my, flat, my feather. Again, outside first, and then the inside, and when I find myself here, I know I need to get to this next one, right? I need to add the next section. I could either break thread or tie off, come tie on over here. But what I'm gonna do, you know me, I'm gonna either add some traveling, and I'm gonna echo, and then get to the next part, of my next piece. So again, I'm handling this section and then moving on to the next. And that's kind of what I meant when I was talking about how you can progress in sections instead of doing like the whole thing at once. All right, I'm at my swirl. We know I like to do the outside of my swirl first, right? Because I, I want that nice big petals to have room. So I'm going to echo back to where they come apart. Again, I know it might look weird now, but 
By the time I add more echo lines and add my petals, you're not gonna notice that little bit right there. And I'm gonna add my teardrop. Again, that's gonna be the piece that's gonna really help fill in where they come together. That way, I don't have to quilt very teeny tiny petals right here. I can kind of fill up that area and then move on. I'm almost imagining, if this helps, I'm almost imagining that there is a line that kind of extends from that very tippy top of that teardrop and I'm gonna quilt my petals so that they don't extend past that line. I wanna make sure I save room for the next, next feather. Now, if you're like, hold on Angela, I'm still just trying to figure out how to quilt and get the petals right, don't worry about this. But if you wanna make sure it looks a little bit different, you know, kind of more regulated, then that, that idea might help. All right, now that I have that, I can start quilting my petals, again, I'm doing my custom ones, doing them in groups of two. If I'm gonna do this feather technique, I'm definitely gonna use the custom petals just because they look more elegant, look pretty, but of course you can do whatever you want. Again, working on the outside first, filling it all the way in. And then, I know I'm here, but I need to add this next part of my feather, right? I mean, this is the next part I need to do. And again, you're probably catching a, a theme here. It needs to start from the bottom and I'm not at the bottom, so how am I gonna get there? I'm gonna travel. I don't mind having multiple echo lines because I think it just kind of builds up the whole design. If, if this feather is getting large and, and really kind of fills in an area, um, I think it just kind of makes it look nice, but it's up to you. All right, now this one's gonna be a little bit longer than the last one, but that's fine. I'm just gonna work my way along that spine, quilting the inside, and as I approach my previously quilted petals, I'm just gonna either make them smaller or I can just kind of run it into that area and come down, it doesn't matter. But the most important thing is I wanna fill in that area as much as possible. This right here, where these come together, this is why I like to do the outside first. I wanna make sure I have room for the outside because I think that is the more visible part, it's the edge, and, and then if I have to make my these ones a little smaller, that's fine. But again, I don't know why I feel that way, it must just be, I don't know, from doing it so much. All right, filling in the center, all right, and how pretty is that? So we're starting to see them pull apart from each other. Now, again, this is like I said in the very beginning, a lot of this design is gonna be thinking through where do I need to go to add the next one and how do I get there? So I'm here, this is my next section I need to fill in. So I'm gonna use traveling or echoing or I, I'll break, uh, tie off and break thread. Either way is fine. All right, so let's keep progressing along this feather. Once you get to, into the hang of it, it gets a lot easier because you kind of get the idea of where you're going. And I'm gonna quilt my next spine, right? I need to get back over here or here. Either one is fine. Um, I'm gonna stay here, just echo back there and add my teardrop. As you work through, again, I like to do all my sections as I work, on, work through the feather, but if you wanted to, you could do all your outsides first and then come to your insides. You could do all of one side first. The more you play with this design, the more you're gonna find what you prefer. All right, so adding those again. I don't know what it is about me that likes to do the outside first, but that's what I like to do. And now I need to come back here, travel down. But I have actually, this whole thing is gonna get petals, so I'm just gonna keep on coming around. And let's be honest, if I'm actually quilting, my line will be a little smoother than I am with the dry erase marker. But, and then adding my next section. filling in that area. And again, you can kind of see where you're getting that swirl coming off of each other. And the more pronounced you make the sections, the longer they are, the more this design will be built up. And then if I'm here, I need to get down to the bottom, I'll travel, echo, do whatever I need to do, quilt my next one. Okay, so what's going on here? You notice I'm skipping that. I don't like to add any petals along a spine until I've quilted the spine first. Even though I have that marked line, I wanna make sure I have the quilted line before I add the feathers. The reason being, if I quilt that line, I'll have that line to hit, right? But if I use the marked line, but don't quilt it right on the marked line, then it will look off. So I never add my petals until I have added or quilted that spine. And going around. Around the outside, echoing and adding my next petals. Again, I know my, uh, my lines are a little squiggly, it's hard to draw across from there. But as you can see, it's really starting to build up and look, and look really, really nice. Now, a couple things about this, I'm sure you have questions and hopefully you're typing them. 
if you're not watching this live, leave a question in your comment sec leave your question in the comment section and I will get on there and answer it. Okay, so let's talk about the feather. Uh, first of all, once you quilt the feather, it's gonna be there in the area and you're like, oh, this looks great. Now what do you put around it? All right, so that's usually the question. What, what filler do I wanna use? Well, this design is really gonna stand out. It's gonna be kind of like the showstopper. It's gonna really be bold. So really anything you put around it, it's gonna be fine. But one thing I like to do is, I'll, I'll just kind of come over here, I like to add some echoing. Now up to this point, I've echoed along the spine to kind of get where I needed to go, but I could always echo around the outside of the petals if I want. Basically whatever helps me get where I'm going. And then from there I can put any filler I want. I could just add a couple more echo lines, I could just do some pebbles or swirls, it doesn't really matter. Just depends on what I'm going for. Sorry, I kind of went off the edge there guys. So then once I have my feather, then I'll come back and add my filler and then continue on. Now, at the point when you're quilting this on your quilt, you can use it where it wraps around. You can quilt it so that they kind of merge into each other if you want them to. There's a lot of different layouts that you can use. Um, but the thing I want to encourage you, and the number one thing that most quilters struggle with when they're trying this design or feathers in general, is extending this out far enough, having these petals really reach out. So if you are having trouble with that, just know that this design looks a lot better with those big, beautiful petals. You can use your marking tool and even just mark a reference line across the outside that will kind of give you something to aim for when filling, when quilting your petals. All right, so let me erase this real quick. Don't you wish quilting came off this easy? All right, you just kind of erase it real quick and it comes off. And let's just see what it would look like with some different variations. Basically, what would it look like if I did a more basic feather? What would it look like? You know, what's other ways I can do this? Now you might remember from the pictures that I showed that some of the spine didn't get petals at all. Well, I wanted to look more like an antenna, so I didn't really add petals around the whole thing. But so you can do that in other ways as well. So if you want, if you want it to be big on both sides, you can. All right, so let's go here. I'm not gonna mark it out. We're just gonna quilt it. So here's my first section. Oh, and another thing I wanna say, even though I like to quilt in sections, some people prefer to go through and quilt their spine all the way down all the way in the area, and then coming back and adding your petals to the side. So please just know, as you're actually applying this to your quilts, you can do this in a bunch of different ways. You just wanna find what works for you. Now, I will say, one of the benefits of using the more um, basic feather is it starts from the top down. So after I quilt my first spine, I can go right into my petals. So if you're newer to um, feathers, this might be a good option at the beginning, so you don't have to travel back and forth so much. But at this point, I need to get back over to the top so I can add my next one. And what's really cool about um, the, feather, the basic feather is some people feel comfortable quilting those top, down, bottom, up, so I wouldn't have to incorporate all that traveling. Now, another thing I wanna point out, or another variation, is if you remember the one I drew, in the side of my circles, I really filled that all in with petals. I mean, I, I crammed it full, but I can leave gaps as well. Maybe I don't want it to look so, I'll say bushy, but maybe I want it to look more individualized. Basically inside that area, I won't make it fill it all the way. I'll leave some gap knowing that later I can come in and add my echoing and add my filler. So the good news is no matter whether you fill it in or not, you can just add echoing, add another filler to fill it in. But just like the other petal, I'm still gonna use echoing, or the other feather, I'm still gonna use echoing to get where I'm going, quilt my petal, and add my, quilt my spine and add my petals. Now with the basic feather, I don't find it as important, again, I don't do this design very much, but I don't find it as important to quilt along the outside first, but it does, I think, I, th I still think it does look better. And if you're gonna do this, make sure you leave enough room to add your petals, right? So like I said the first time, this is kind of a small swirl. There's not a whole lot of room here. Um, if I was actually quilting this, I would make sure it's bigger, I just don't, I only have so much room to draw. All right, and the, if I was here and I needed to get up there. Again, if you're newer to this and it seems a little overwhelming, try drawing it out a couple times. Basically just kind of getting comfortable with the idea of breaking that feather up into chunks and then adding your, then go ahead and marking it and trying it on a quilt. But what's kind of reassuring is that when you get to quilting, I always say people will notice, um, a, they notice a gap in the quilting before they notice an error. The unquilted area is what tends to draw our attention. So no matter what we might see as perceived mistakes, 
what's going to be noticeable on the actual finished quilted piece will be these petals really kind of popping out. So don't don't feel like, oh my gosh, everybody's going to see that mistake because when you're done, they're just going to see that big, beautiful feather. All right, so same basic idea. I still have my feather. It's still taking up a more, you know, more space than a regular one. The main difference between this and the other one is I just don't have as many echo lines. Again, that's totally up to you, kind of how you feel like, you know, you want to look. I like echo lines in my feathers because it helps separate the sides of the petals and kind of keeps them from overlapping and drawing attention to a certain area. Um, but again, you're just going to kind of have to play with that and see what works for you. So that's pretty much the basics of how it's going to go together. Um, when it comes to marking the spine, I like to do it before I even get started, before I've even loaded the quilt or sandwiched it. And I like to go ahead and use my like water soluble marker just for the spine. Now, if you are a little bit newer here, I'm going to switch to the camera so you don't look that. If you are a little bit newer to it, it might be tempting to want to go ahead and mark out all those petals. And you can do that, but I would kind of um, caution you against that because once the whole thing is quilted, it's hard to see where to go. Or once the whole thing is marked, it's hard to see where to go. So if you feel like you need to mark out the petals, I would mark them out in sections as you quilt it. So I would mark your spine and the first part, quilt it, mark out the next spot and quilt it. Because um, you might find after a couple of times you don't need the marking lines anymore. And also you'll be able to see easier where to go since you don't have it all marked and ready to go. So hopefully, I, this is something I haven't taught a whole lot, so I'm trying not to make it sound scarier than it is or sound harder than it is, just to give you some practical tools to um, adapt that to your area. So do we have any questions? Jessica's writing furiously. I have to tell you it's funny because feathers are one of those designs that I really struggled with when I started quilting. I just couldn't get them and once I got them I wanted to use them in all the areas. Although I did get a little comment on the last Midnight Quilter, I'm so glad that you didn't use feathers on this quilt. So maybe this ornate feather isn't for every quilt. Not necessarily busy fabric, I'm not going to put it somewhere you can't see it. Uh, maybe for an ultra modern quilt, maybe not. but. Every once in a while, you'll come across that quilt. It's just begging for those big swirling feathers. Go for it. I promise it's not as hard as it looks. Is this always done? So question, um, it's, is this always done with custom petals or can it be done with other variations? Yes, you can do all the variations. And if you saw the Fabulous Feathers video series that I put out, or you want to check it out, I showed you a lot of different variations and any of those will work. Um, what's really fun about feathers is you can change up the arrangement. You can add some echo lines to those petals and get some really cool looks. For myself though, I don't usually do a lot of variations because I want the simplicity of the petals to let the rest of that feather shine. Again, that's just me. You have to kind of decide what your feelings are on that. How did I set it up for the thicker spines I showed in my example? So probably talking about the quilt with a beautiful butterfly. Um, how did I get that going? Basically, I marked out the spines and then started quilting. Now there are areas where those get a little bit longer than my, um, my throat space on my long arm so I had to advance in between some of those lines but knowing once I got to the pedals I can just kind of fill that in. Um, let me see if I can real quickly and easily kind of pull it back up. So here you can see again the spine. It's not quite as curly because I want it to look like an antenna and so I marked that out but once I got to adding the pedals then I can just do that. So again there's no difference here as far as like setting up the quilt but sometimes, depending on how big I want those sections to be, every once in a while I have to advance the quilt back and forth just a little bit. Um, on a sewing machine would, wouldn't necessarily, would not necessarily be necessary. Necessarily be necessary. How do I avoid the fabric bunching up in tight spaces? This is a very common thing. Like if you put a lot of dense quilting or you're kind of quilting these long lines, some you'll get little tucks. Um, very carefully, I think, would be the answer to that. <laughs> you're like, that doesn't help, Angela. Um, making sure your quilt sandwich is stabilized correctly or on a long arm, definitely adding your petals and your, your um, spine and all that before adding the dense filler. That would be the best thing I would say. However, there are times I get little tucks because I have such dense quilting, um, but I try to avoid that if all possible. Back tracking is difficult for me. How do you stay on your previous stitching? So that custom feather we saw incorporated some back tracking, right? We quilted out, we backtracked and swung back out. How do I um, keep my line right on that previous stitching, I use a blending thread color so you can't see those backtracked lines. I mean, if you think about it, remember I said the unquilted area is going to be the most noticeable thing. So if there is a back stitching that isn't quite right, it's not going to be super noticeable. Let's go back to the picture real quick. So again, even if all those petals aren't all perfectly back stitched on, 
The thread color blends in so you can't really see it and the unquilted area is kind of what draws your eye to it. Now I know when you're actually quilting it can be very discouraging because you're like this close you know to the uh, the quilting and you see every little area that it didn't hit that perfectly but I promise once you're done and you stand back all you see is that beautiful beautiful feather. So try to be encouraged and just know that you know you hit it sometimes and sometimes you don't but using that blend thread blending thread color is the biggest biggest thing. So I would love to know what you think about this. Leave a comment um, below if you're watching this. Tell me like, would you try this out? Is this too much to think about? Would you just add a couple of regular feathers? I think it's fun to have some different um, tools in our, our quilting tool bag, but maybe this isn't one for you. Maybe you don't like it. I'd love to hear it. I'm kind of tempted to include this on future classes, but I need to know if, if you think it should be in there. Uh, next week's live chat, I'm gonna be talking about ribbon candy. So that's another one of those common designs that people get frustrated with. I'm going to break it down, show you how to quilt it, and some unusual ways to use ribbon candy on your quilts, from all over designs to sashing to fillers. And I uh, hope you can make me uh, make it there for that. Again, that is every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. Well, I hope everybody's weather is as beautiful as it is here in Kansas City. I hope you have a great week, and I will see you next week for our next live chat. Until then, everybody, happy, happy quilting.